How do you write with hot coals? Using a cinder quill. Bike chain starters, episode four, cinder quill. What's going on? I'm Pokey Welder Zach, and today we're gonna to be making cinder quill out of bike chains. Cinder quill is one of my favorite starters right next to Totodial. So I'm super excited about this video and I actually really, really love the design for this as well. The design for Cyndaquil in this video is the second iteration. The first, as you can see here, and the new version is right here. But before we get started, I would love if you would drop a comment below on which version you like better. The first version or the second version? Make sure you like the video, subscribe so you can continue following the series, and uh, let's get to it. We will lay out the pieces that will be used for Cyndaquil. I did most of the prep work beforehand, uh, where you can see I have in my containers some pre-broken out pieces. Now, this is a uh, tin link piece, which is used for the head. Uh, I usually don't prep these because they're not as common. Um, and that is my chain breaking tool that I use for each of them. Now, to the left here, um, this is the main part that will be used for the body of Cyndaquil. It is a six piece, a five piece, and a four piece. Next to that are the arms and legs, which are composed of four pieces and two pieces. And then the head, which is a 10, uh, ten piece, two four pieces. Uh, and the scraps to the left are used for the fire. So we're gonna kick off here with the body to start it off. Um, this is a six link piece, um, kind of creating that roundish body for Cyndaquil. Uh, and just tacking each of the joints to keep it in place. We will do this for the remaining parts as well using the five piece, which will be the base for the back of Cyndaquil. Again, once we get this one uh, tacked, we'll just add it onto the, uh, the top of the six piece. We will tack each of the four corners just to keep it in place. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot because this is fairly thin metal. Um, so it's not too hard to keep it in place. Once we have that part of the body done, we take the two four pieces that are used to the legs and overlap the open side with the sort of closed link, as, it's, as I call it at least. Um, this both creates a sort of round leg and also a toe for Cyndaquil. Once those are tacked, we can add them onto the body. I use this magnet here just to keep things in place, uh, makes it a little bit easier. Um, we will position the legs sort of on the back portion of Cinequil, um, give it a quick tack on the top, and then we will move the other one on as well. A lot of times I will do these just short tacks just to make sure they're in place, and I'll do some additional welding to, um, to secure them. Now for the head. So, Originally, I was using a 10 piece and I actually ended up moving it down to an eight piece just because the smaller size fit the design a lot better. Um, the original design was a little bit too big and so I decided I wanted to kind of scale down to make Cinequil match the same size as most of the other sculptures. Um, and I'm pretty happy with how this design ended up turning out. Those are the main portions of the body. So it's two side-by-side -side eight link pieces, giving him a sort of shorter nose. And then um, using the two four pieces to create squares, which will go on the side to sort of finish out his head. Once they're on, just give him some quick tacks on each of the corners here uh, to secure them. And then I will flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Once the head is secured, we can add it to the main part of the body. Again, just doing one quick weld here to make sure that everything lines up, looks good, and then I go back and I finish with some stronger welds on the top and bottom to keep it in place. Now, the arms are just little one links uh, that I use. Technically, they're two and I have to overlap them. Um, I would like to keep them a little bit smaller, but his arms in this case are actually also very much used as supports because he is so top heavy. Now we do add one more four piece onto the back and this will be sort of where the, the fire comes out of Cyndaquil. Ooh, fire. That's right, keeping it hot with the content on Patreon. First, I wanna thank all my current patrons. 
Uh, your contributions and support mean so much to me, and I really appreciate all the help that y'all have already provided. For anyone who's not a patron, the link is down below. Uh, go check it out. If you want to help support an artist, I'm trying to make this a bigger part of my life. Or if you're interested in the content uh, itself, I'm posting updates, uh, new designs, iterations of current designs, um, I'm going to be doing special events, giveaways, all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, if that interests you, if it sounds cool, the link is down below and I would love for you to join the community. So uh, with that, I will let you get back to the video. That's right. Fire. Speaking of fire, let's get the fire started. Uh, this is a two piece with the open end facing up and is going to serve as the base for the fire on Cyndaquil's back. I also use two, uh, three links that have open ends on either side uh, to sort of create the wide base for the fire. After that, I have a whole bunch of just single, single piece, half piece, however you want to refer to them, that I go through and pretty much just tack wherever they fit in. I try not to make it too symmetrical because fire is wild and isn't symmetrical. And so I try to give it a little bit more of a natural feel doing it that way. So I got the main part of the fire set up on Cinefill just to make sure that it would fit and stay there. And now I'm going back and adding in more uh, little one pieces on there wherever I see sort of an empty gap. Once I make sure it fits and kind of like it, I go back and use the Dremel with a uh, cutting bit on the end of it to go through and cut each of the links in half. Now I only cut it about uh, either halfway to three quarters down uh, so I don't disturb the welds at the bottom because they are very thin um, and there were a couple of them that even doing this still would break off and I had to re-weld them on. Um, I also try to use the chain links that already had the slits in them because it does make the cutting process much easier. This is the first step for making the fire on the back look more natural. And the second step is going to be taking my welding, uh, my welding pliers and sort of bending them into shape. Um, this is bending them in, bending them out, giving them small twists and just trying to make it so that they don't look as uniform. Um, it's again, because they're so thin, some of them do break off. Um, but again, it does give it a little bit more of a, a natural appearance. Fire isn't supposed to look symmetrical. So. All right, so the final parts are going to be for cleaning. Uh, get that nose all shined up and then go ahead and get the head cleaned up, the arms, the legs, uh, mostly just going through and making sure that there's no big slag or ugly welds left over. Um, I try to hide my welds generally, but it doesn't always work out. So. Uh, the final details are used with the Dremel tool and a grinding bit because the chains do have a lot of gaps in them. Uh, a lot of times slag from welding will get sort of stuck in there um, or little bits will, uh, will be left over in the crevices that I couldn't reach with the angle grinder. I absolutely love this tool. It, I first started using one maybe a year ago and it made a complete difference in how my sculptures uh, how, how the finishing look of them turned out. I'm gonna take the Dremel to the fire as well. Uh, the angle grinder definitely does not fit uh, for cleaning up the fire. Uh, there's a lot of little just crevices in there. Again, just trying to get out um, any welding slag, any sharp edges, especially on this one, uh, because I did cut all those little pieces in half. I'm sort of going through and just running over the edges. And now for the spray paint, uh, using a beige coat for the body, a yellow coat for the fire, uh, and then for the fire, going back over it with some red and orange to give it that sort of natural appearance. Once those parts have dried, I'm going back over the body of Cinequil with an acrylic paint. Um, I use a blue, purple, and a tad bit of green in this combination. Uh, you can't really see the green, but um, under some light, it, it just gives it a little bit of a different coloration than just a straight blue. Um, I also do use a little bit of white just to, to lighten it a little bit. 
this first coat um, is so-so, uh, so I did have to give it another one or two coats. Um, the fire is pretty much good as it is, but once the coats are on there, I go back through with a red paint pen to give him his little dots on his back. Uh, and then I finish him up with a white paint pen on his toes. Uh, he does have little toenails, I think they are. Um, claws, maybe, might be a better term, but he does have them. Uh, so it's just the extra little detail to make sure I get in there. So there we have it. That is the final design for Bite Chain Cinequil, painted and all. You've seen it from start to finish, raw chains to a painted form. So let me know what you think. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts below. What was your favorite part down there? Um, what did you think was really cool? And how do you think that it turned out? We're gonna get a little bit of a close up of the fire here. Uh, I actually think that this is probably one of the best uh, fires that I've ever done. Just the design of it, the paint for it. So I think it turned out really well. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Go ahead and comment below on what your favorite part of the video was, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of, and help me create better content for you. Uh, I'd also like to give you a reminder that when the video hits a thousand likes, I'll be doing a giveaway, one free sculpture for uh, someone in the comments below. So until then, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and next week we will be uh, kicking it off with my favorite starter, my favorite Pokemon, Totodile. So with that, Hope your day has a toe-to-dial smile.